This is about a small cluster of homes in southeastern Virginia that has become one of the most sustainable communities in the U.S. And it's about the two people who risked everything they had to build it. It's also about creating a more connected and conscious culture for the future. Stu Rose and Trina Duncan have initiated a unique pilot project of sustainable housing. Homes that do not deplete the Earth's resources and are healthier, more comfortable, and more delightful to live in. The project, called the Garden Atriums, is considered to be one of the most sustainable communities in the U.S. because the homes are net zero homes and address more dimensions of sustainability than similar projects. The term sustainability, as well as terms like green or energy efficient, are not measurable. And that's why a lot of people advertise that their products or their buildings are green or sustainable, and they're not. I like to use the term net zero because it's measurable. And what that means is we take care of 100% of our needs with what comes to the site naturally in terms of sun, in terms of wind, in terms of soil conditions, in terms of rain. For heating, for example, when the sun comes in, it's warming your house in the winter time, but then the sun goes down and you still need to stay warm. So we have 100% design plus storage. We need materials that absorb the heat in the daytime, thermal mass like the ocean, and at night, those materials which were warm during the day now radiate the heat back. At three in the morning, it's raining and you don't need the water, so we have cisterns. So the rains at three in the morning goes into the cisterns when we get up in the morning and now we need the water for bathing and cooking. Then we bring the water back through filters and we enjoy it. So net zero essentially means we take care of 100% of our needs and at the end of 12 months, it's a total balance of zero. In each of the homes, the sustainability dimensions include heating and cooling, electrical power, water, and air quality. The community also shares a three-acre park, a boat dock, and food production areas, which include a vegetable garden, greenhouse, and an orchard. The community has also engaged a farmer to maximize food production in these shared areas. Why do all this? Why did Stu and Trina risk all of their personal assets, everything they own, to create a sustainable community? Also, my doctor in change, change management. I said, maybe this is one global issue that's worth tackling, because there's a lot of issues I'm not equipped to tackle. But this is one. And the other is when I grew up canoe tripping. One of the first ethics you're always taught is you always leave a campsite better than when you got there. And you don't know if anybody will ever use that campsite again. It doesn't matter. You just do it. Yeah. As a principle of life, that's that's a nice one to go with. Everybody says, I'm going to leave it a little better than whoever's there, even if nobody ever uses it again. Right? The world's a better And place. so that said, there's the reason to do it. As it is often the case with the new idea or way of being in culture, Stu and Trina's idea of sustainability was initially met with resistance and a lack of understanding. Is, is, we're testing. We're constantly testing to see what does it take to build a new way of living. Mm -hmm. um, so we're testing the farming. We're testing how we work with people within the community. How, how do people figure out what they do in, sometimes in the community? Um, but it's, it's really saying how do we test and try. But until we do that, um, nobody believes in others' alternatives. So, I mean, to me, what I'm looking at and saying, our community is a little laboratory of saying, here's what the possibilities are. But it's possibilities to me that need to be really challenged about how we live day to day needs to be adjusted.